Hey guys, Mr. John here. So this is the third and final video that I'm going to do on Lewis structures. And this video is going to teach you how to deal with what are called resonance structures and also how to deal with oxyanions in general because they have some uh, specific rules. So what a resonance structure is, is it's a set of Lewis structures that when you put them together, they describe the actual structure of the molecule or the ion. So this example here shows carbonate. Uh, a carbonate anion has one double bond. And so you can put the double bond here, or you can put it here on the left, or you can put it here on the bottom. So how do you know where to put it? Well, the answer is you have to put it in all three locations. And so what you do is you draw the ion three different ways with the double bond on the right, on the left, and then on the bottom. And you connect them with these little double-sided arrows. So what does that mean? Well, in reality, the double bond isn't a double bond. Um, it's really a one and one-third bond which is found in all three places at the same time. And if you look down here at the bottom, it kind of shows the three structures put together. Um, and it has these little dashed lines to indicate that that's not a full double bond. That's really a one and one third bond. Don't worry about the, the fractional bond order for now. There's going to be another video on that. But really what we're going to be focusing on today is drawing the resonance structures like this connected by the double-ended arrows. This hybrid structure that's shown here on the bottom, you don't need to be able to do that. I just want you to be able to do the, all the possible resonance structures. So basically, anytime you have a choice on where to put a double bond, you have to show all of the possible choices and connect them with these double-sided arrows. The other rule we're going to talk about is for dealing with oxyanions. So these are anions that have oxygen, such as carbonate, sulfate, perchlorate, um, nitrate, etc. When you have an oxyanion where the central atom is allowed to have more than an octet, what you want to do is you want to look at the charge of the anion. So this is a sulfate um, anion. It's drawn two different ways. On the left here, we have a charge of 2 minus on the outside. This is shown where all of the atoms, including the sulfur in the middle, have an octet. And so you might think that this is the best structure. But what's shown here are these little red numbers. These are called formal charges. And we're not going to talk too much in detail about formal charge right now. But what you need to know for now is that the formal charges should be as close to zero as possible. And this structure, uh, none of the formal charges are zero. So the rule is, if you look at the charge on the anion, you're only allowed to single bond that many oxygens. So this is two minus, which means I'm only allowed to have two single bonded oxygens. And that's this structure over here on the right. This is a better structure. And so we have two single bonded oxygens, and I know I'm allowed to have two because I have a charge of two, and two double bonded oxygens. And that does give sulfur more than an octet, but that's okay, because sulfur is in period three, and period three elements are allowed to expand their octet. And so this is a better structure, and as you're going to see later when you learn about formal charges, the formal charges on this structure are much closer to zero. So let's do uh, an example of an oxyanion. We're going to start with ClO2 minus. Let's count up the valence electrons in the oxyanion. Chlorine has seven. I've got two oxygens with six each. And of course I have that negative one charge, so I have to add one for that. And that's going to give me a total of 20 valence electrons. We will single bond the elements together. Put an oxygen on each side. Give our outside atoms an octet. And now we have 16 electrons. We have four more we need to put on the central atom as two lone pairs. And we have a structure where everything has an octet. So the temptation would be to stop there. However, the rules for oxyanions say that if you have 
a charge, you're only allowed to have as many single bonded oxygens as the magnitude of the charge. And the charge in this case is one, or minus one, and so we're only allowed to have one single bonded oxygen. So I'm gonna take this oxygen on the left, I'm gonna move a pair of valence electrons into the bond, and I'm gonna redraw that over here with that double bonded oxygen and a single bonded oxygen. And that does give chlorine more than an octet, but again, that's okay. But I chose to put the double bond on the left when I could have just as easily put it on the right. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another structure where the oxygen on the left is single bonded and the oxygen on the right is double bonded. And these are my two resonance structures for this ion. And in reality, the structure is not the one on the left or the one on the right. It's a hybrid of both of these. And since this pair of electrons spends its time equally between the left and the right-hand side, it actually, uh, it actually is ha half bond. And so the, bonds, the bond order in this ion is one and a half on each side. And there's another video that explains that a little bit more. The next example is BrO3 minus. So let's again start by adding up our valence electrons. Bromine has seven plus three oxygens with six each plus one for that negative charge. And that's going to give us a total of 26 valence electrons. Put the bromine in the center. I'm going to put it over here for now. Single bond my three oxygens. Give them their octet. And that gives me 24 electrons. I've got two more that I'm going to put on the central atom. And then of course this is an ion, so I'll put my brackets around and my charge on the outside. So now, that is a satisfactory structure where everything has an octet. And actually, if you were to write this on uh, an AP exam, they would most likely give you credit for that. But it's not the best structure. The rules for oxyanions say you're only allowed to have as many single bonded oxygens as the magnitude of the charge, which is minus one, which means we're only allowed to have one single bonded oxygen here. So we're gonna take two. I'll take the one on the left and the one on the bottom, and I'm going to double bond those. And so when I do that, what I end up with is bromine with two double bonds. And again, bromine is allowed to have that expanded valence shell. And then it's got this single bonded oxygen, like this. But this is only one configuration that's possible. I could also just as easily put the single bond on the left. And then double bond the other two oxygens. Or I could single bond the oxygen on the bottom. So these are my three resonance structures. And again, I'm gonna connect them with these double-sided arrows just to show that all three of these possibilities are actually one hybrid structure. Lastly, I just want to show you this example. Uh, this is a nitrate ion, NO3-. So let's count up the 
valence electrons here. I've got five in nitrogen plus three oxygens with six each plus the one for my extra valence electron. That gives me 24 electrons that I have to deal with. I put the nitrogen in the center single bond my three oxygens and that gives me 24 electrons um, so the temptation here, according to the rules, because this is an oxy anion, is that I'm all, I should double bond two of these oxygens and leave one single bonded because my charge is minus one. But you have to remember that nitrate is not in group, or sorry, period three or below. And so it cannot have an expanded octet. And so I'm only going to double bond one of these. So I'm actually going to just... Erase this lone pair here and form a double bond here. And that gives nitrogen an octet and we have the right number of electrons. And we don't want to do any more double bonding because nitrogen cannot have more than an octet. But it can have resonance. And so I need to show the other two possibilities for where I could have put that double bond. I could have put it down here. Minus one. Or I could have put it on the right. Connect my double-sided arrows to show those resonance structures. And again, that double bond is not spending all of its time here or here or here. It's spending an equal amount of time in each place. And one bond divided between three places is a one-third bond. And so the bond order here between all of these nitrogens and oxygens is one and one-third. And we'll get in again. There's another video on fractional bond orders that'll make that a little bit more clear.